Okay, so let's talk about Jerry Lorenzo in a multitude of ways today. That's what this entire video will be on. Just me sharing my thoughts because quite a few things have happened <laughs> along the way. I think probably since my last Fear of God discussion video, and hopefully you've checked that out. There is an entire playlist on my channel here for Fear of God and Essentials. And if you're just tuning in, like if you're a brand new subscriber, one, hey, what's going on? Uh, but if you're brand new, you weren't here for the times, the releases, the drops, okay? I was that that person, okay? I was the girl there present for so many different releases, okay? And things have changed, as I think they naturally do. I mean, we've seen changes in his designs, and we'll talk about that, even though I do have extensive videos on that, but we'll talk about that. But things certainly changed for myself, and it's just funny to see and read some of the commentary. Um, on Jerry and, and how some people have chosen to pull back and then a number of other things. So yeah, I used to be the person you guys, as soon as a drop would happen, I would discuss the drop that was on the way and what items were, were uh, you know, expected to come out and the price points and what I was interested in going after. And then you guys would see a full review and try on of those items, how they fit based on my weight, height, how I chose to style them as well. And you certainly support it and love those videos. And trust me, I appreciate it. Now, will you have those videos moving forward? You haven't really gotten them. <laughs> That's because I'm not interested in buying a number, really just anything right now. I was going to say a number of things, but I, the reality is like any of it. And I think that's okay. For example, I'll look in the comment section of, of different posts or it can be videos and I'll see people say, well, you know, some aren't rocking with what Jerry is doing now, and so they've just kind of like dropped him, uh, but they're gonna regret it, or we're still here, and we're still loyal and everything, and it's like, one, um, the parasocial relationships that happen between, like, individuals you don't know, and they can be designers, it can be celebrities, it can be somebody on social media, and just an everyday person or consumer, is a little concerning. Okay, um, it's just, I'm just gonna throw it out there. It's a little concerning, okay? Like there are some that actually treat him as like the false idol in which you shouldn't, especially if you know that he is a very religious man. I'm just saying, maybe drop some of that energy down a few notches, okay? Because consumers have the right to not wanna just buy every single thing that comes out for someone. Um, number one, there actually is a point where some of us don't need any more sweatshirts or sweatpants. And if we do, we just may not want that as what we're continuing to buy. That's okay. It is okay. For any number of reasons. It's fine. You'll be fine. If you're still choosing to buy every single thing he drops like clockwork, as if it's like you're picking up monthly groceries to be able to sustain your body and eat, then great. A lot of us are just not there anymore. I am that person that's like, I, I have all of the essentials that I could actually need. The pun and the name is there. Okay, I got it. The essentials are checked off of what I would need. I am good. Also, the fit changed, okay, which I've spoken about again in extensive videos, which was just a no for me in a lot of ways. The intention behind me loving the sweatpants, it had to do with the taper, and it certainly didn't have that taper anymore. They went back to change the hoodies, but by that point, I also have far more hoodies than I would ever need, okay, as just one person, and I am now on this, even if I get something in, it's, hey, I gotta get stuff going, okay, so I'm just good on the amount that I have, but it is funny to see people kind of have this very defensive nature for those who don't want the new homecoming items, and let's talk about homecoming, okay? One, if you didn't see Sheroy's video, please check it out, okay? Plenty of laughs, and I connect with him very well with this point. I am far removed from undergrad, okay? I know at any point I could walk in right now to an undergraduate classroom and I could just blend in. I could, I could just blend in. I graduated undergrad in 2011. There is no part of me that needs to have homecoming plastered across the front of my shirt or on my pants or on my shirt, hoodie, anything. I just don't. That doesn't mean I don't wear collegiate apparel because I do. Massive <laughs> Michigan fan till I die, okay? I support Don Staley uh, and South Carolina women's basketball team. I love Paige Beckers and I've loved very many, a, a lot of UConn players. So therefore I also do own, I think maybe one or two things that are still UConn. And then I also bought something because, you know, just I'm a big fan of Juju Watkins, okay? This is a Juju Watkins household. <laughs> so <laughs> I certainly wear and buy collegiate things, but the homecoming aesthetic, 
and it just so audacious across everything. It was a no for me. It was a no for me. Uh, very much like it was for Sheroy. Also, can we get into <clears throat> these price increases? Um, I understand everyone needs to account for the cost of materials, okay? Cost of goods, it's just, it's, it's higher. I get it. Do you know one way that you can easily kind of maintain your financial stability? Breathing, you know, pretty calmly, not stressing or straining. When you see something shoot up in, in cost and it's not a need, just leave it there. It's okay to leave it there. Wait for a sale. How many times have I said, just wait like five to seven business days for retros and they go on sale? You can't do that with all Fear of God Essentials clothing because some of it will sell out, but you can do it with a lot. I would certainly do it with a lot if I were interested. I'm not, but... 165 for a heavy hoodie. I don't care if it is giving weighted blanket. I am not paying that. Th does that mean I've never paid more than 150 for a hoodie? Nope, it doesn't. I have. I've paid that. It had far more going on with the design and aesthetic of the hoodie itself. Far more going on, at least for me, to justify why I paid more than what I paid. And it was also a smaller ran business. So I totally understood the cost implications there. But because something has heavy in it, and it's, it's more weighted, okay, that's cool and fine, but I'm not paying the 165 for a hoodie, 155 for pants. I fully still, I understood when people looked at me crazy when I was paying 95 for a hoodie and $90 for sweatpants. I got the, I got it, I get it. So many people will say, when did we start to allow brands and designers to charge like 90 and 95 dollars per piece it's not the set like per piece i get it so if, if you as a consumer want to pay the 165 155 by all means you do that i will not and it's funny because i am more in a position than i've ever been with these student loans gone to be able to do a lot of things with my disposable income and yet i'm less willing to do those things run that back if you didn't quite get that i'm more able i'm just less willing at a lot of price points like I, the, the, the value, again, the cost per wear, it all plays a really big factor. And for me to spend that on a hoodie, do you know how many hoodies I already own? I won't disclose because for just, no, you're not shaming me and dragging me in this video, but <laughs> I've given away a lot, still own too many, but for how many I own and how often that one would be worn, no, I just wouldn't be able to justify it. It would be like me walking up to a hoodie vending machine, dropping in probably, I don't know, 20 25 dollars every single time i wanted to wear it like let's say within the cost of the first year no i'm just not doing it i'm not also we ventured into 80 dollars for tees again choices that he can make i'm not knocking the choice as a designer you do what it is that you want to do but absolutely positively it's just not for me okay so one thing you are going to see and i'm wearing here and it'll be on screen okay so have i ventured into something that maybe has like that aesthetic because it does remind me of like that older style phys ed or collegiate or school apparel. Can you still get that aesthetic? You can, and it doesn't cost that. It doesn't have to cost that, right? Because keep in mind for wear and care with those items, yeah, you need to either dry clean them or you need to uh, cold wash and then you're gonna have to like hang them dry, which is what you have to do, guess what, with everything that is Gymshark. Now, Gymshark is authentic to who I am because I am a gym girly. I am always in the gym, okay? All the time. <laughs> Lifting, trying to get more into uh, the calisthenics that I used to do when we were on lockdown and we didn't even have access to weights in the gym. All of that, running, incline walks, biking with Peloton all the time. So that is me. It's true to myself, right? So me being in a Gymshark um, top, it's like the boxier women's fit top. I'm wearing a size large. And then the sweats, which are also considered oversized, they're in the women's department in a medium. They fit great. They're super comfortable. They were far more affordable <laughs> than these homecoming items. And I picked them up on sale. So again, it's not to say that I don't still buy sweats here and there but it's just a different approach also because they change the fit on a lot of things so it is certainly a different approach for me but this is still giving me exactly what i wanted to give just in terms of like what you're looking at for the aesthetic of those items yeah i can still get that with with a brand that is true to myself that is super comfortable uh i can take care of it here at home i don't have to worry about the, the you certainly worry about damaging an item if you've paid a certain dollar amount for it i will just say that myself personally i certainly think about that so yeah super comfortable in this love it um in terms of college and i said like oh well i still certainly wear collegiate apparel yeah i do 
Like this hoodie that I picked up for USC Trojans, first off, again, I'm not like a tried and true Trojan fan, certainly have favorite players over the years or whether it be Reggie Bush or other people, but me and my love for Juju Watkins and everything she's going to be and is already for women's basketball. And I love the design and the fit of this. Yes, I decided to go ahead and buy this because also I had already sold sneakers. So it paid for the cost of that hoodie. So it was nothing really out of pocket for me. So went ahead, walked into uh, Hollister and picked this hoodie up. So I'm wearing a size medium. I love the crop boxy look of it. Super just comfortable. It's so nice and soft on the interior and just that entire design as it goes from like back left arm all the way over to right arm. Yeah, that's great. And that is something that I think elevates just the look of this. And it was $64.99, I believe. Yeah, like $64.99 when it was all said and done. So just saying, you can still want the aesthetic of things and just not have to go and pay for this um, for essentials. And looking at the commentary and everything around as we wrap this video up, I do think there are some things that were just simply unfair in terms of Fear God Athletics and how it was rolled out. And then some of that accountability will have to go on to Jerry just in terms of what he delivered to the market. So two things can be true at once. I'm sure a lot of you caught the complex um, interview that he did. And I think it was extremely eye-opening. I think that, that veil was kind of pulled back. You also heard some of the things that he was even struggling with that you may not know. Everyone is fighting a battle you don't know about which is why people need to be more kind just online. But a lot of people are fighting a battle you don't know about. He spoke about sobriety and I think that was amazing to hear. Um, I think anytime you hear of someone struggles, it certainly humanizes them. Although we shouldn't need to hear someone struggles to humanize them. We should just treat each other with love and respect, even in our criticisms. And he spoke about, you know, his struggle with sobriety. And I'm glad for him and his family and loved ones and friends that he has taken the actionable steps to try and, you know, go a, a different way. Because I'm sure the strain and the stress is immense. I don't know what it's like because I'm not in his position. He spoke on not knowing what that position would have been like, you know, for, for Kanye and that close relationship they even had with him and his decision to go a different route. Because one, also people, that's what you do. Like you apprentice under somebody, you gain a lot of experience, you have a vision of your own of what you want to create and you go do it. Like that's, that's normal. It's like a coaching tree in sports. You're under a head coach and then you go and you have your own program. I don't understand why people are so weird about it when it comes to, to, yeah, well actually not. Yes, I do. Cause many of you are not rational in any way, shape or form, but he spoke on that. And then the timeline in terms of Adidas versus Nike, that timeline I think is very real, right? You can just think about this as a consumer. And I spoke about this in a recent video when a collaboration is announced and you hear it, they're already at the point where they're ready to roll out the marketing campaign. Not, hey, we all just got to the table and we know that we're going to be working together, but it's just like crickets because what's next? I think that was the position that he was in. And so we saw the, the length of time that it took, which builds anticipation, which everyone's judgment goes to a heightened level. So I do think that was a disadvantage that we don't see a lot of designers uh, deal with in the market. But I also think that not delivering on exactly what was touted as what we would see for athletics, because it was certainly more lifestyle. And again, I know there was a lot of strain and stress there, but I think accountability can be had on both sides. So where does it go from here? A lot are saying this has failed and they just need to be done in part ways. Some are saying, well, he just needs to go back to Nike. A lot of you return to X's where it didn't work out, huh? Like, even when you know that you're not good together, like the vision you had, the vision they had, they were so far apart, and you still return, don't you? Fix that. Therapy. It would be a great thing for you to fix because you guys want so many designers to go back to brands in which it didn't work, and that just seems a little weird to, just to me personally. Uh, I think they certainly extend through 2025. Do I think it goes beyond that? I'm just going to say personally, I don't because there's just been... It's been a tumultuous ride and they're only technically one year in of product being in the market. So past 2025, I think, listen, people move on quick. Teams move on quickly from coaches and I think brands move on pretty quickly from designers. Unless we're talking the continuous ever, never ending cycle with Travis Scott and Jordan 1 Lowe's. Like that, I, I don't know when that's ever ending. I don't. And another thing. So I spoke about this um, channel. You guys can certainly find them here um on youtube and uh, i i fell in love with them like immediately just because of the value so shift fashion group <laughs> just watch this it's from essence what is fear of god okay 
You guys have been requesting Fear God for a while. I guess this is part of their main line. Forearm sweat. Okay, let's open this up. It's a sweatpant. <laughs> well, let's see here. This is uh, from Essence. Fear of God forearm sweat pant in black. How much was this? 1,000 Canadian. What? Oh. <laughs> what? These are heavyweight sweatpants with a somewhat vintage wash. We have a mainline tag. It is a, yeah, just not the greatest workmanship. I do love how deep these pocket bags are though. Sorry I give that to them. I hate when brands have shallow pocket bags and I have a big phone, but this, oh, what is this? Free lint. You're much better off spending your money either getting multiple pieces if you really want stuff from Fear of God or Essentials or just looking elsewhere. Because ultimately no one really gives a shit what sweatpants you're wearing when you're at home sitting on the couch watching TV. So when it comes to the fabric, I think you guys have seen a lot of the flaws with the fabric, how it started off as a fleece. This is something you'd get at like Walmart in terms of napping. Very low pile. F never paid full price for mainline and I never will, okay? Well, one, I'm not even buying essential, so I'm definitely not buying mainline right now. I would never pay full price for mainline, okay? I, I All the mainline items I have, they were on deep, 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 deep discount, okay? Or they were already pre-owned and I picked them up that way. And a lot of that I've, I've, I've actually just probably passed on um, in clearing out my closet. But I too would not pay $1,000 for sweatpants. And I think it is okay, again, fair criticism, objective criticism of like the track nylon pants. So these are the newer pants. I own these pants. I paid $90, so not the full 120 that they were retailed at. I paid $90 for these pants. And I think it just does go to speak to, you expect a certain level of quality when you are buying items. Now I haven't dealt with as poor a quality as some consumers have, but I know you guys commented when it came to like the nylon track shorts that they ripped after one wash, which is terrible because that is not something that should happen. Do you know how often I wash so many Gymshark things and like they're fine? So uh, it was really interesting to see the breakdown by this channel and just the craftsmanship, like the discussions, they're great. They're amazing. So I would very much so encourage you to check that out if you were just into learning like the ins and the outs from someone that's in the industry and they're advising brands on the materials, the craftsmanship, caring about production quality and control. I think that speaks to a lot. And so yeah, I would say check it out. I summed up on that video based on the thousand dollar sweatpants. Again, I would never in my life pay that my god like i just would not uh but yeah so just sharing my thoughts when it comes to quite a bit recently andre lorenzo so go ahead and drop yours below did you go after anything related to homecoming um for this recent fall release that he had do you intend to go for anything else what are your thoughts do you think that it is done past 2025 with adidas i am curious and if you like what you see go ahead hit the subscribe button hit the like truly appreciate it as always act your age not your shoe size peace